Hello gorgeous souls, wishing you a beautiful day and uh, jumping in with today's live video on feeling numb and resistant and particularly those anxious feelings or the feeling of anxiety as well. So um, one of the, the main factors or one of the main symptoms of burnout is feeling resistant, feeling like you constantly have to push yourself, feeling like you've got to motivate yourself to do anything, feeling resistant to doing things, even things that you know that could be really supporting you. Hey Deanne, great to have you on honey. Um, this is, is one of the main symptoms that come up and also feeling numb in your emotions. You may feel like you want to cry or you need to cry, but feel actually stuck or feel unable to actually do that. And often it's accompanied by um, what I explain or feel uh, is, you know, like an elephant sitting on our chest or just so much pressure inside the body, but also coupled with a lot of anxiety. And I was having a, a very big conversation with a beautiful lady yesterday about this and really helping her to understand what's actually going on with her nervous system. And often when we've had chronic stress for a long period of time, we've been in that sympathetic fight flight response for such a long time. And eventually the body gets to a point or um, this can be coupled with childhood trauma or developmental trauma um, where we go into the freeze response because the body's like, my God, I can't keep living in this heightened state. So the body actually drops us into the freeze response. The freeze response is the feeling, feeling numb, feeling resistant, feeling blocked, feeling paralyzed, feeling stuck. Uh, and feeling unable to make the changes that we need to in our life and in particular feeling any emotions we can feel quite robotic in this state feel like you've just constantly got to be pushing through all of those things can really really impact and will perpetuate and continue burnout um, and exhaustion because it takes so much energy to push through that particular feeling of resistance or feeling so stuck within the nervous system the other thing that we um also spoke about is anxiety often uh, is coming from that place of feeling so much pressure internally of having no capacity left of feeling so overwhelmed and often the other key part with this is that we lose resilience uh, within our body within our well-being within our mental capacity within our emotional capacity within our physical capacity um, we lose so much capacity when we've had all of these stacked events in life and have been unable to resolve them or know how to actually move through them or how to change our thinking or perception around these particular events as well. And all of that combines to a very heightened response um, of living in that constant, can't stop, got to keep going, which is your fight flight and the freeze response being actually on at the same time. And it's like the having the accelerator, which is the fight flight, got to get out of here, got to keep going, can't stop. And the break, which is that freeze response on and that is the point of all chronic illness. That's when huge inflammation occurs within the body. It's when huge autoimmune issues um, really present, uh, cancer, diabetes, all of those different things. And really knowing how to work with the nervous system is so incredibly important. Hey, Gloria, so great to have you on too, honey. Um, with all of these things. So anxiety, uh, often I've found there can be some other underlying causes for sure. Um, but what I've found is often it's unexpressed emotion. We could have a lot of stirred, uh, stored um, emotion within our nervous system that we fell, feel that we haven't been able to express. Or if that was constantly shut down in you as a child, meaning it was made wrong to cry, to be upset, to be angry, you were sent to your room, you're isolated, all of those things. Often when we feel that heightened emotion start to arise and we actually want to express it, we unconsciously or consciously will shut it down and repress it. And when we do this, we're now stacking and the body is becoming very full. And it's kind of like, if you imagine um, having a cup with water, you put one more drop in that water and that cup is already full. Now we've got the overspilling of the emotion and often that's how anxiety presents is because it's uh, the, the releasing of these particular emotions or the body trying to release these emotions, but we keep putting the lid on and we keep, um, I guess adding to that sense of pressure um, because it's already full we're already at capacity and it can be really really challenging when we feel that we're already at capacity and then something else happens in our life and it really can um, blindside us um, and have us um, really 
become unstable within ourselves as well, emotionally, mentally, physically. Like I mentioned before, a big hello to Patty as well and anybody else that's jumping on, um, is really understanding these key factors in how to work through this. And a big part of it is actually feeling safe enough in your environment, number one, feeling safe internally to allow the big emotions to come up. And often it can feel overwhelming. It can feel like, oh my God, if I open that vault, it's never going to end. Um, however, after doing this work literally for 12 years for myself, moving through massive life events and um, some quite big traumas in there, um, what I know for sure is the more that we actually allow ourselves to feel what it is that we're feeling, that anxious feeling, that anxiety dissolves itself very, very quickly. And of course, understanding how to work with your belief systems, how to shift your thoughts, because the more compromised we become in our physical energy, meaning the more exhausted we are, the more insomnia we have from all of these rampant thoughts, from the body being in that fight flight response, the less energy we have, the more more activated our ego survival mind becomes and it really can um, perpetuate a lot of the anxiety and a lot of the fear and a lot of the stress and the worry and it can be very difficult if you don't already have the tools in knowing how to work with yourself with this to actually pull yourself out of it because there's such a downward momentum because physically um, you're feeling exhausted you're feeling terrible within your body as well as then the added emotions on top of that and that also creates that spiral effect with the thoughts of then beating ourselves up, feeling like what's wrong with us, we just need to pull ourselves together, we just need to keep going. All of these compound in a really um, uh, uh, large, um, <laughs> I'm lost for the right word at the moment, but in a very, very large way that absolutely impacts how you feel about yourself, um, your self-belief, your self-confidence, all of those things and really understanding how to work with that. So number one is feeling your emotions, allowing yourself to be in that will also help to take you out of that freeze response. Also being with somebody, so socializing if it feels safe to do so and only with somebody that is already regulated in their nervous system that can also help to take us out of that freeze response and uh, I have a client that um, she feels she can't cry by herself but as soon as her partner comes in um, because he's in a regulated state she can lean into that and she will often allow herself to cry in that situation uh, for me I was quite different I had been taught my emotions were wrong I wasn't actually able I found it very difficult to cry in front of my partner or with my partner even though he was in a regulated state um, and found it much easier to take that time so we're all different depending on our life experiences or what we've experienced um, and knowing how to work with this is really important but definitely feeling your emotions um, is a big key step but in a way that also isn't re-traumatizing to your nervous system as well and knowing when to pause when to you know stop look around go do something else for a little bit so that we're not overwhelming our system because as we start to empty the cup and uh, allow a little bit out but through the emotional release, uh, that can feel overwhelming to the system, but we don't want to do so much that you're actually filling the cup back up again um, with reactivating the, the nervous system. So uh, if you would love to find out more information about this or you feel that it's very relevant for you, uh, really understanding the root cause of your burnout is absolutely critical, meaning what thoughts, what beliefs am I having? that continue to drive this because until that's resolved and often it's because of unhealed or unresolved childhood trauma a lot of the women that i speak with feel overly responsible for their family members or for their family which has then translated in their work situation in their current relationship with their children where they're over giving and uh, over uh, taking over responsibility for everyone and everything around them which is leaving them incredibly under resourced physically financially emotionally mentally and certainly for their own physical energy as well so really understanding this healing this uh, is absolutely critical and if that really resonates with you I really invite you to reach out I have a couple of uh, free 15 minute consultations uh, which I'm more than happy just to have uh, uh, just a, a conversation with you about and really understand what it is that you're experiencing where you're currently at and if and how I may be able to help you with that so wishing you a beautiful rest of your day uh, lots of love from my heart to yours and uh, look forward to speaking with you soon if that truly resonates as well have a great day